Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where we take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm Maki, giving my views, thoughts, and opinions. And we got a great one for you. We got NBC's own Connor Rogers. Connor Rogers of the NFL Stock Exchange and his updated mock draft. But what's crackalacking? It's your boy, Bro Schmo. Just in case you did not know. So go ahead. Become bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below where we have that nice, oh, beautiful football discourse. Let's go ahead and get into this sucker with the Chicago Bears taking Caleb Williams. Spoiler alert. Uh, it's still Caleb. So let's read this one out. The race to be the first quarterback taken has gotten much tighter between Caleb Williams and North Carolina's Drake May, but Williams' unique ceiling makes him Chicago's pick here. Okay, we also got general manager Ryan Poles will most likely find a fresh start for Justin Fields elsewhere this offseason to select his own signal caller for the first time. The real question becomes, will the same coaching staff be kept in place to develop the new franchise quarterback? Honestly, that's a really good question. But I think... I honestly think that's probably the most ideal circumstance as long as uh, the Carolinas pick's going to be like one or even two overall. You're probably going to contemplate. Yeah, let's go ahead and get the new signal caller. Let's uh, let's find a good price for Justin Fields, move them, and uh, potentially get a new coaching staff. It may be more offensive-minded coach. I, I doubt Ben Johnson's going to be coming your way, but... Maybe like a, uh, uh, is it Bryce Callahan, the OC for the Bengals? I'm actually a big fan of his. I want to say it's Bryce Callahan. Um, no, it's Brian Callahan. I knew it was Bryce or Brian. I couldn't remember which, but. Yeah, I, th I think that would be a really fun pick. Uh, a really fun uh, hire for the uh, Bears if they do part ways with this coaching staff. New York Giants take Drake May. That's kind of a no-nonsense, no-brainer at this point. Daniel Jones, you get off his uh, contract after the 2024 season, but get a long-term answer. Obviously, Daniel Jones wasn't it. I talked about last offseason how I'm surprised that they didn't extend Saquon Barkley and slap the franchise tag on Daniel Jones. I just kind of felt like that was probably uh, just a better option altogether. Like Saquon, you, you go ahead, get running back while you think you can maybe get it cheaper. Uh, what, what was uh, maybe similar to what Jonathan Taylor got? I think his was three years, 44 million. Maybe something in that in that wheelhouse. And but because it's not Saquon. Saquon's not the, the one you're like, okay, let's put him on the franchise tag and see how he does. It was it was Vanilla Vic. You should have done that. You should have done that. All right, now the draft starts. New England Patriots, Olu Fashani. Wow, over Marvin Harrison Jr. This kind of surprises me. This is a tough spot for the Patriots. They would love to reset at the quarterback position and get one of the top two prospects, but there's no way the Bears and the Giants can pass on Williams and May. Instead, in this scenario, they get a franchise left tackle to protect the future under center. But still, like uh, that doesn't talk me away from Marvin Harrison Jr. This is uh, the Patriots have been a team that have been without a pass catcher in ages since like the Brady and Edelman and Welker days, like and Moss, like. It feels like it's been a long time since they've had like comp competent pass catchers, or at least scary ones. And here's your shot to get one. That's why I would go. I would go there. Uh, Marvin Harrison goes to the Cardinals. It's kind of a no brainer. If he makes it to you at four, you go ahead and do it. Uh, I kind of suspect that the Cardinals uh, will be taking whoever is not selected at pick three, whether it's Olu, whether it's Marvin Harrison. Uh, you can make a case that they could trade down here if Marvin Harrison's on the board, but he is on the board. It's a good pick. Now, this is where the draft starts, I guess. Now, we got like the top four prospects off the board. Now, we're looking at our Joe Alts, the Edge class, uh, Brock Bowers. We're on Brock Bowers' watch right now. Listen, I know you love the NFL draft as much as I do, and you're going to want a nice, hefty watch list of players during this college football season. Well, go ahead, 
Check out my draft guide. You can purchase it for only 30 bucks by Venmo in or PayPal in me. Links in the description. It's a one time payment and you get it for this whole draft cycle and forever and always. Technically, it's a Google spreadsheet. So send me your email when you send the payment. I'll get you hooked up. You will see my current prospect rankings and big board, my full evals. And guess what? It updates throughout the whole draft cycle. So it's a great purchase. And it's a great way to support the channel. Oh, he goes Malik Neighbors. I like going receiver here. I like it. Uh, in my preseason mock draft, I compare Neighbors to DJ Moore in this scenario. He becomes Moore's teammate, form an electric pair. Honestly, no kidding, dude. Like I, I like this option, taking the whoever the top receiver is in that second tier for the Bears. Uh, you could pair you could pair DJ Moore up with a uh, vastly different receiver, a big bodied uh, receiver in Keon Coleman, who's more than just a possession guy. You go uh, Roma Dunes, a big bodied, great length, great speed, or Malik Neighbors, who is just a monster after the catch. So I I'm all for it here. I am all for it. Green Bay Packers, Joe Alt, kind of the obvious pick. Um, moving forward, do like you got David Bakhtiari and just the the leg injury. It's really, it just feels like it's the end of the road here for Bakhtiari and the Packers. Go ahead, get a Yari got a very young offense. Continue that youth movement. Get your left tackle. Joe Alt would be a fabulous pick. Los Angeles Rams, Armarius Mims. Okay, uh, I've been talked into the re last few days about uh, Brock Bowers potentially being the pick, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be mad about uh, a tackle taken to the Rams because, quite frankly, their left tackle position sucks. Zach Thomas, Alaric Jackson, they need to find a guy there. Armarius Mims can be that guy. Very intriguing tools. Very intriguing upside. Uh, had a one of the best playoff performances last season of anybody so i'm cool with that i am cool with that but real quick let's give a shout out to today's sponsor underdog fantasy when you sign up using promo code bro Schmo, they will match that first deposit up to a hundred dollar dues is the best place to play weekly best ball or my favorite higher and lower on player props remember use promo code bro Schmo when you sign up and they will match that first deposit up to $100 reduced. But as always, bet responsibly and bet within your means. Let's go ahead. Keep this sucker rolling. Keep this sucker moving with Tennessee Titans taking Brock Bowers. This is another pick I, I, I kind of like. Another landing spot for Brock Bowers I kind of like. Uh, where you get him there with Mike Vrabel. Uh, yeah, you're, you, you get a very good blocking tight end who is just amazing after the catch really really is they probably want to give it another year with andre dillard the right tackle positions up for dispute with nicholas petit freer uh maybe give peter skaronsky a shot and one of those tackle spots that would be what i'm doing right now but i like this pick do you really want to take ot4 in this class make case for the edge class you can make case for corner you get your pick of the gander or you could even go receiver here then for broncos go liatu latu the pass rush hasn't really racked up this season so it seems to be a, a nice pick to me they could also go receiver another team that has a variety of different options that they could go the atlanta falcons take chop robinson all right all right, when will quarterback three come off the board? Not here, so you're going to have to wait. But the the pass rush has been piss poor. Put it nicely for the Falcons. They need guys that can get pressure. You're going to pair up Chop Robinson with another Penn State edge rusher in Arnold Epichetti there. Commanders. Let's think about the commanders here. So we've seen multiple edges just come off the board. They could go with the tackle. So again, you're kind of getting tackle four. I don't know. I'm going to be intrigued. And they go Telenisa Fuaga. Big fan of Fuaga. Uh, I like his landing spot here. Gives you a uh, tackle of the future 
whether it's the left or the right side. They need they you need to protect Sam Howe. Sam Howe has yeah he has been impressive this year. He's last couple of games limited his limited getting like creating his own sacks, but the offensive line desperately needs retooled. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is Keon Coleman or Roma Dunze. Oh, it's Jared Verse. So very convenient spot for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as you can make the case for you made the case for a wide receiver here. Uh, Baker is only on a one-year deal. Maybe make the case to take a quarterback three here. Uh, Edge though, it, like the pass rush outside of Vita Vea, uh, you got promise in Clyde Jacansi, but you need to get it from the edge position. Shaq Barrett's kind of in the prime, um, in, in the twilight years of his career at this point. So having him being more of a, uh, a guy in the rotation. It, probably the right way to go. So Edge makes makes a good chunk of sense here. Jets go with Keon Coleman. I like this. I like this to pair up with Garrett Wilson. You can give Aaron Rodgers all of the weapons to work with, unlike what Green Bay did with Aaron Rodgers. And, uh, yeah, no, it's a good pick. Good pick. They could address uh, the offensive line later in this class. You could make the same case for wide receiver. It is a strong tackle and receiving class. Chargers go with Kool-Aid McKinstry. Defense kind of kind of kind of kind of a problem if that wasn't apparent as Jared Goff just whooped the tar out of them. But uh, I imagine you're gonna see a new coaching staff in or with the Chargers next season. Maybe not a defensive minded coach. Maybe, maybe they go that way anyway, but it just hasn't worked. And even with the defensive minded coach and Brandon Staley, they, this defense has been terrible and they've made uh they, they've gone out and paid to get that defense better, and it just hasn't. It really just hasn't. So grabbing a corner here makes a ton of sense. You get your pick of the gander, so to speak, at 14 when it comes to corner class. Indianapolis Colts take Roma Dunze. I like pairing him up with Michael Pittman. This is actually one of my favorite like uh, projection picks for the Colts here at 15. Just get uh anthony richardson more like more weapons for next year and you're just going to get that with that offensive line with those playmakers you're going to get a really good evaluation you're going to be able to tell real quickly if uh, anthony richardson is that guy or not the las vegas Raiders, uh they go jc latham wow okay This one's a little interesting. I'm going to read this one. The Raiders could certainly get involved in this quarterback class, but in this mock, they would go with the best player available approach instead. They got a sure thing in Colt Miller, Colton Miller, a left tackle. Uh, to be fair, like Luminor and Mumford haven't been bad at right tackle by any means. Uh, and I mentioned those two because uh, you've had like Mumford injured at points and such. Uh, but interesting if i'm the raiders i'm probably going elsewhere i'm probably if i'm gonna look outside of quarterback I'm probably looking at this corner class then yeah yeah that's probably where i'm looking but man quarterback just seems like such a nicer option let's go take a quick swig of the uh caffeine ah that's good Buffalo Bills, they go with Cooper DeGene. Russell Douglas is more more was more of a hey, we're hurt at corner, let's bring him in. It seems like that they're already done with Kyrie Elam. Uh, Christian Benford is more of a depth play. Uh you got White coming off an injury corner. Feels like a really good option here. Cooper DeGene, I think, would be a really good fit. He also gives you um return experience though you got hardy there for that Bengals are gonna go with troy fatanyu i get it man the uh offensive line has been a been bad for the Bengals. i mean this is probably a replacement for volson or i mean he fatanyu has played tackle so it's like you could kick him to right tackle with uh williams likely uh going elsewhere next season but this just seems too early my opinion for 
a interior player that could maybe play tackle. He's playing tackle extremely well for Washington. I'm just saying in the NFL. The New Orleans Saints take Jordan Morgan. So we see the tackle class come off the board. A lot. A lot here. Um, so they don't know what they got in Trevor Penner. Well, they know right now. It's not great. So much so that they actually eventually benched him. But this is technically like a rookie year for him after having the ACL injury in 2022. Uh, so you don't know exactly what you got. And you're kind of hoping that the first rounder will eventually pay dividends. Do you go for the was the sixth offensive lineman in this class? Uh, I would consider the quarterback position, but like Saints could, there are a lot of options to the Saints with this pick. Um, and I mean, to be fair, it is relatively early. Uh, Jerzon Newton actually would be a super fun pick for the Saints. Pair up with Brian Brazee going forward in the uh, future, but they're getting good play out of, uh, um, was it uh, Saunders? All right, Arizona Cardinals go with actually Jerzon Newton. And I'm sure they would love this. Love, love, love. Just build the trenches, build that interior. He is, I think I'd be willing to go take him a little bit higher than this. Uh, but oh, good pick, man. You get a guy that can stop the run and just plays with his hair on fire uh, when going after the quarterback. Michael Penix going to the Minnesota Vikings seems like a good pick. Get a guy that wants to sling the ball around uh, to one of the best receivers in the league in Justin Jefferson. Then you have an emergent Jordan Addison. I think that's great. I th I'd be game for that. I like it. So there we go. We got quarterback three off the board. Dallas Cowboys go Dallas Turner. Ooh. Turner real realistically goes earlier than this after he puts on a show at the NFL combine but the thought of him and Micah Parsons wreaking havoc is too good to pass up he plays with so much speed and can even uh can even make plays off the ball in space so like yeah yeah I mean it's not like it's a need for the Cowboys but at the same time might be the best player on the board I would consider the corner class because I'm pretty uh, I would say that Nate Wiggins is in this vicinity, and I would probably lean to the corner class in this scenario. But, like, Turner's freaking phenomenal. Oh, there goes Nate Wiggins. He's going to the Steelers. Yeah, listen, Joey Porter's great, man, but you got to pair him up with someone else. Uh, Patrick Peterson, I thought was kind of a weird fit for this defense anyway, and he just hasn't been exactly good. Levi Wallace is a fine depth player. But you got you got to find that cornerback too, and Nate Wiggins, man, I think he offers it. Uh, Houston Texans go Troy Franklin. Oh, they're like to hell with the uh, Mecca Buka. We ain't gonna be reuniting uh, Stafford and Buka. Okay, so Texans, yes, those Texans have one of the most intriguing passing offenses in the NFL right now. The impacts that rookie C.J. Stroud and offensive coordinator Bobby Slowick have made have been incredible to watch so why not keep building troy franklin a true deep threat has caught 30 plus yard receptions in every single game this year he's averaging 18 yards per catch and has topped a thousand yards while playing largely on the outside big fan of franklin nice to see him get a little bit of love all right here comes the patrick paul pick to the dolphins i think we've seen it in like every mock draft we looked at i'm not particularly that high on Patrick Paul. I like him as a day two option. I don't love him in the first round. I'm just not there yet. Dolphins, I would love to get more offensive line help. So, okay. <laughs> All right, we got the Seattle Seahawks taking Tyler Nubbin. I do like them going with a safety here as uh, you look at this, uh, that the Seahawks... It'll be interesting to see how they handle money tied up in Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams as safety moving forward. Uh, obviously, we haven't, like, I, I think you've probably upgraded that position with Nubbin. He's the top, one of the top players on the board. 
he, uh, you get you get your first shot at that position group in this draft class. So I do like that pick. You start assembling this new Legion of Boom. It's beautiful. Niners go with Taryn Arnold. Taryn Arnold. Okay. Uh, I do like them going with corner. I do like them going with corner. Pair, getting someone to pair up with Traverius Ward, who has been very under, like, I feel like he's underrated. He's been playing really good football uh, this season. And, I mean, this is probably better than going for, like, tackle seven in this case. So, I like it. I like it. Jacksonville Jaguars go with Graham Barton. Okay. Uh, again, I don't love taking an interior class in the first round here, but yeah, no, I still don't love it. I mean, you go edge. You could take wide receiver, Mecca Buka, be on the board, but is he too similar to what they have Shin Kirk doing? You could take other shots on maybe a freak like Xavier Leggett. I just, I think there's just better options, you know? Baltimore Ravens take Emeka Buka. He's right here. He's off the board. You're going to get him in Todd Munkin's offense. Oh, we. I think wide receiver is definitely a possibility. OBJ is on a one year deal. Uh, Rashad Bateman really hasn't showed much. So, it, it, especially if this with this offense running more uh, 11 personnel. I think you're going to love, love, love to grab another receiver in this class, whether it be day one or day two. Detroit Lions, they go Kamari Lassiter. Uh, but who did the Bills take? They took DeGene, right? Yeah, they took DeGene. I was thinking DeGene was still on the board, but Detroit Lions take Lassiter. Every one of their moms mocking a corner to the Lions. Uh, this would be a good fit for Aaron Glenn's defense. Uh, Lassiter has been darn near shut down this whole season. And see Chiefs, they go AD Mitchell. Uh, we have talked about how, how the Chiefs probably you get a good stab at a very, very quality wide receiver. You start to build those pass catchers back up. You're going to get to pair, pair AD Mitchell with Rashi Rice, and you start to form a very nice uh, core of receivers there. So I do like that. I do like it. And then finally, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to take TJ Tampa. Let's go. I like Tampa, man. He's going to give a lot of people Juju Brent's vibes. Uh, a guy that's just kind of tall, big, lanky, moves well. Uh, Eagles, yeah, they got Slay. Yeah, they got Bradford. Uh, Bradbury, excuse me. But you probably want to start looking to the future when it comes to that position. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've seen good things out of... Uh, <laughs> oh, excuse me, not Keely Ringo. Who's the Bama corner? Should have went earlier last year. Former LSU. Oh man, I got his face in my head, but I can't. I can't. His name doesn't come to mind. I, I'm not a big uh, Job fan, so I know it ain't that. Sophia. Eagles cornerbacks. Oh my gosh! Don't don't show me cool. Don't show me the guys from the past. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> I always love when I look it up and it's just a slap your head moment. Eli Ricks. There we go. Like Ricks has showed a little bit. So. Oh, I mean, just add, again, it's a volatile position. Eagles are a team that's always drafted for the future. They they address needs before they become needs. So I, I like this pick. It's fine. All in all, man, outside of like the interior picks, offensive interior, I think it's a solid mock draft. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead. Do that YouTube thing as always. Until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.